welcome to Tykes TV. Uh, Dan and Joel, uh, great that you can join us. Appreciate it. Busy day and everything like that. A uh, bit later than usual, getting uh, after match four tap. But yeah, Dan, I mean, again, you know, going one note up, sat too deep back. I'll, I'll admire it. But over to you, Dan. I mean, what will you take on, on game, mate? Um, well, you I mean your first uh, first half? I thought we played some more eight stuff, good passing, you know the. Uh, but it's, uh, I think what we've done is we've not learned from mistakes of previous games. Um, previous game Bristol Rovers, we were trying it too much down wing. All the sorry, we were trying all the attacks down wing, and. By that stage, they'd kind of worked out, so they'd just crowded at penalty area. Now, obviously, now Nicky Cadden and Cotter were trying to run both at byline against Bristol Rovers. We were doing the same thing against Peterborough. Hmm. But when we played Bristol Rovers, they only needed one ball forward and strikers were expecting it and strikers were playing then a lot wider, which, as we can remember, that's how we conceded first goal, uh, hmm. their equalising goal. And then it was exactly the same against Peterborough. And I think we... You know, you look at first half, yeah, we've played some all right stuff, but I mean, how many chances did they have? You know, it were crossing to the box, so we managed to get Edu, poor marking. Um, and wing and wing backs were in no man's land. And I think when you look at the goals in second half, again, we did play some all right stuff. I'm not saying that we were utterly awful, and I won't say we were outclassed, but what I'm saying is, is that. Those three goals, the wingers basically had a free run down both both down both sides at pitch, mm. and um, that's what cost us, I think. And I think it's just, I don't know whether it's a mixture of things, but I came over from that game saying, you know, tactics and tactics yeah. were just all wrong, and we didn't show enough diversity um, in in his in his formation to try and when we went one nil up to try and keep them. It seemed like to me that when Peter notched it up a gear, as midfield kind of dropped back, but as wing backs were still far up pitch. Now I'm not really, like I said, I'm not sure whether that's players not doing what they were supposed to be doing or whether it's tactical it would you know it's a bit of tactical ineptness on uh, on Colin on on prop dugout, but disappointing day overall. They were disappointed. Disappointing, yeah. Uh, Joel, I mean, just going on from what Dan said, I, I found that and all is that individual headers cost, cost us goals, uh, being pulled out of position. Obviously, fair play to Peter, who highlighted that, picked out of vulnerability. Uh, for me, I thought Roberts, well, we'll come to Man of Match a bit later on, but I thought if it wouldn't have been for Roberts, it could have been even worse. I thought to pull us some decent saves, uh, mm. some one under saves, and all, Joel. I mean, what what's your take on uh, on game? Uh, concerned, to be honest, mate. Very concerned. Um, we've gone from looking like Brazil after Port Vale, and now we're struggling to we're struggling to do the basics. Uh, I don't want to say we look like a Sunday League side because that's probably going a bit too far. But individual errors, as you said. Same mistakes as we did in Bristol Rovers game, trying to defend the lead. We clearly can't do it. Um, Port Vale must be looking at us after after our last two league games and I'm thinking, how the hell did we get beat 7-0 to them? Because I think it was just one of them things, especially against Vale, I think everything we touched went in. Um, I think we've been, been given a very harsh reality check now, but last night for me, we needed a reaction. We didn't, we didn't get it. We knew what we got wrong against Bristol Rovers. We sat on the lead for 80 minutes. It didn't work. They they should have come away at least 4-5-1 quite easily. And that's no exaggeration. Um, and tonight, last night, sorry, again, we... Good first half. I thought, I thought we competed with them well. I thought, to be honest, chance-wise, I think Peterborough probably edged it in terms of chances in terms of clear-cut opportunities, but I think we, we stuck with them. Second half, uh, excellent play by uh, by Cotter to get the goal. But again, after that, again, we sit, we sit on a lead. We invite Peterborough to press us. And for me, as you said, they did a job on us. The, 
it looked as if they looked like a side that were waiting for us to tie you, waiting to pick us off, and that's exactly what they did. How the hell we get done twice in 60 seconds from the same position, I'll never know. Um, and I'll be honest, after the third goal, I switched off because that uh, to get three very soft goals to give away, and we've got a very soft underbe underbelly apparently, and it needs sorting quickly. Yeah, Dan, I mean, it's like what Joel was saying, we're a bit concerned in that we our uh, things happen two, two goals in a short space of time. And that's the that's the worrying thing is that you know teams can pick out the vulnerabilities and the space created. Um, and again, I know there's uh, <clears throat> there's going to be players coming back. McCarthy, we're missing Connell, we're missing Cundy. We are missing some personnel, <clears throat> but in the same respect, the players should still know positional wise what the job is and where to pick up. You know what I mean? So I get where people say yeah, we're missing that, but. End of day, you, you've got Nicky Cadden, you've, you've still got Liam Kitchen there, you've still got players that have been in the league, such as Jack Jordan Williams. So you've got players there what know what to do, but like what I said right at the beginning of the season, when, such as like Anderson, Manchester have gone and uh, Collins have gone. The defensive unit last season were one of our key, were our key attributes. Yeah. Now, we, the, the defence and the goalkeeper having to understand all over again the understanding of the role, the communication, the partnerships to build up. And again, you can't just do it overnight, considering that pre season were well, behind closed doors or yeah, if it's time called off. So again, it seems to be that we're having to learn right from early on, doesn't it, Dan? It does, mate. Yeah. And I think just bear with me a second, uh, technical difficulties. But I think this is the, I think the, You've just picked it. You've just put it in a nutshell. Uh, said in a nutshell, really. Um, Neil, is that yeah? We've got a good goalkeeper in Roberts, and he's pulled off some vital saves. And they and to be fair, their goalkeeper did some good saves in the first half as well. So it's not you know this is not against Roberts, but one of the things that we did put really well last season was stopping those clear cut chances. And I, from what I remember in those earlier games last season, and yeah, we, we lost, listen, we lost like this last season and, you know, it ended up all right. So it's not me being disaster. You know, it's not all that disaster. Mm. But those goals that we conceded, they weren't because we got run all over pitch. It weren't because we were, it were just due to, I believe, them having like more sustained, sustained attacks and being a little bit more clinical. Now I think it's gone the other way around where those chances are a lot more clear cut. They're due mm. to a lot more mistakes. Then we're relying on Roberts. And I don't think we should be relying on Roberts. Now we all know that I said we're a good goalkeeper last season. Mm. For example, I said, we only used I said when they'd managed just to get behind our back line and then we could rely on Eister to make the couple of saves that he needs. I saw Roberts make those couple of saves, but you, 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 you can't ask him to save absolutely everything when they clear through on goal. It's, yeah. it's You're asking too much, aren't you? Mm. And there's another thing, and I mean, a lot of a lot of fans are arguing this. Well, we've got injuries. Well, we've got, you know, key players missing. Whilst that could be a defence, at the same time you could attack on that on that base and be critical because the main issue is is that okay you've got for argument's sake well Williams is having to play at centre back when he's a right wing back. Well, okay then. You've also got the part and uh, uh, I'm going to call him Casper because I never pronounce his yeah. name right. And then. But you're, when you're committing wing backs up that far up pitch and you're getting caught out of wing, well, Jordan Williams then has to resume to a wing back role or Kitchen will have to do it on the other side. Mm. And what you're doing is stretching out defence. And you basically, then you've got a Peterborough rushing into the box and trying to get a goal yeah. and try and smelling blood basically and thinking that they could snatch a goal. Mm. And that's exactly what happened. So, as much as you can say that we are missing experienced players, and I, I, I do think that, 
but they were not tactically, we weren't tactically aware enough to say at the first half when we had loads of them warnings saying we need to change it up a little bit and trying to push those wing backs a little bit a little bit deeper onto pit uh, to try and minimise any threat that they did and uh, that the Peterborough were, were presenting. And we didn't do that. And I mm. think that, I just think that that were, that's the main inexperience showing in that game. I, I mean, also you've got to, you've got to look at Russell going forward. And I've got to think to be set up. Hello. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that, mate. Technical yeah. difficulties again. But you've got to look at Russell going forward. At going forward, and you think, well, he's an all right player, but he can't. T- he's, he just looks so uncomfortable when he's going to attack. When he's looking like he's in that defensive midfield position, he looks a lot more comfortable. So why don't you argue we're using him a bit more as an anchor man? And when that ball comes in, he's running in or trying to pick up on his mark, uh, trying to pick up on one of their midfielders, trying to make a run. Mm. But you just didn't see that. And you look, you saw it midfield just like kind of back off and wait in case that they're a counter attack so they could pick out either Cotter or Cadden. It, yeah. it just looked disjointed. <laughs> the entire, uh, it just looked disjointed. And it looked like we were trying to make sacrifices. For how we pull uh, for this possession based football that we're trying to play, we're making massive sacrifices in both defense and attack, and we're not mm. getting those we, we're not getting those results from. We did against Port Vale, mm. but mm. Port Vale a couple of weeks ago now, you know, we need to we need mm. to learn how to adapt and yeah. have that plan B if things yeah. are not going well. Yeah, that's true. I mean, time for first Dave, uh, uh, Joel, just following up from there on about the tactics side of it. Times in first half, I thought we're playing actually far, far at the back because Williams was going to actually win back to its centre and like kitchen were drifting over to the left. I'm thinking, are we changing this formation so soon for you know far too too? I'm, I mean, I don't know what you think, Joel, but just going up on there, it seems to be that he likes he likes the favoured wing backs, the wing the wingers. If that's the case, do you think it it might have to be a a change of formation? I mean, you look at last season. Play three at back, and but this time it's a different kind of possession he's wanted to do. It seems to be like more possession based, but use the wingers. But when yeah. we're that far forward, we, we, we're vulnerable at back. Is it going to be a change of formation? Are we going to be playing far at back, two wingers, midfield, and a couple up front or one up front with one off? Is that a way to go for a job? I think pushing, obviously, I think there's a lot of. There's a lot more um, emphasis on on the wingers, and I would be massively concerned if either Cadden or especially Cadden, look, Cotter's looked good in the last couple of games. But again, the problem with that is you leave yourself exposed, you leave space in behind, and Peterborough are a well-drilled enough side to deal with that and exploit it and make the most of it, and they did. They made the made the most of our spaces. Um, going forward, um, in attack, I'm extremely concerned. Um, we haven't replaced Norwood to a decent standard. I mean, for me, I said it in, I said it in WhatsApp chat last night. I think Johnson Clark Harris is exactly the type of striker we could do with at this football club. He's a poacher, but he's physical as well. So. He, so you guarantee to get goals there. And he knows where net is. I think he scored 26 last season. Um, but yeah, tactically, tactically Collins worries me. Um, especially we've we've done the same thing in two games. I don't know. Listen, American League is a different animal compared to compared to English League. You might be able to sit on a one nil lead over there, but you can't do it. Can't do over here. There's too much quality in even even in League One. Sides that are well drilled enough will pick you off. But yeah, I think we need to look at as I've said it before, I think it's an issue of balance and I don't think we've found the sweet spot yet. I think he's still searching for I think we still need to find find the balance between what works and what doesn't. I think I know we've got players to come back, Connell, Connell et al. And a couple of others, but what concerns me is there's probably only two or three 
Connell Connell will definitely be definitely be an addition coming back in. He comes straight back in. I think likes of Benson. I think I'm not necessarily sure he'd get back into side straight away. Um, so there's probably only two or three faces that you think, yeah, they come. They might challenge for starting eleven. So that's what concerns me in terms of depth. Have we got enough depth, and do we need a couple of couple of extra faces? And that's another the recruitment side of things is a complete other issue because are we going to get the quality in we need because we seem to have gone back to non-league again which which again is another concern Dan uh, is it a change of formation a change of tactic would you you know if, if Neil wants to go the you know the possession wing based and vulnerabilities that it's showing or shown in the last couple of games is that we are leaving gaps in Bermudis. Would it be a, a change of stance and said, you know what, we'll go for it back then. We'll play as wingers and then we'll we'll alter it. Or would you think, no, stop to that? Is, is it a is it a, a concern that <clears throat> it's gonna carry on into the next game and next game it's like mm, this isn't working? And like I said, last season, first couple of months it was slow for Duff because he, he was knowing the players, the players weren't knowing him as how he wanted to play. He wants to be high press, the high tempo, be in your face, the atom. This is like more of the possession base, keep the ball, try and hit it on the counter of the wingers and play that, which I think against Port Bell, Port Bell made it easy for us because they were going full on for us. <clears throat> we were hitting a ball, get it going, and we were exploiting Port Bell. But when mm. you look at Bristol Rovers, they tend to be like soaking it up, waiting. Their, their goal. Quick, quick, bang, bang, pass, pass, bang, and again, they were, they were his mother. Yeah. yeah. So is, is is it a change of tactic? Is it a change of stance from Neil Collins? I think it means more pay, playing more patient football. And mm. I don't think we are being patient. It's it's not when the formation that we play, and I can't remember often. If we go any further with that, then Dan, do you think, I get we're coming from possession base and patient. Have we got the players at the moment? We got people coming in to to be doing that. Do you think we have got them players on pitch at the minute? Oh God, um, I don't. I personally don't think we have. I think we're too going for it and get it into box kind of thing. I don't. I think, I think we're missing that holding player like Luke O'Connell in midfield. But I'll get it. Oh yeah, yeah. Help me. Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm, yeah I'm, I'm, I, mean, I thought you meant looking... The reason why I hesitated is because I thought you meant the team that are, the team that were out yesterday. No, 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 no. I don't think, I don't think we have, if I'm no. quite honest. Yeah. I mean, I know, Joel, you, you've said you like Barry Cotter. Personally, I think he's not ready. Nowhere yeah. near ready. Hmm. I'm not and saying he's finished the article, but I'm saying he's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same I as Lepata's, Lepata's exactly the same. He's got, he's got good elements to his game, but I don't think... Neither of neither them have a finished article. And I think football's obviously a results-driven business. We need results now. We don't need them in 18 months' time when, course, they've, yeah. when they've had a chance to adapt at league. So I, I still think we're... And that's why I mentioned the depth, because I, I still think we're short in a couple of areas. Yeah, and we probably... And you, you, you would be right, um, if I'm honest. I do think we need to be having extra... There should be extra additions, either it be through loan or transfers. But... Um, to you I mean just going back to Barry, like with Cotter, I just think that he's what you expect from a young player, and what I mean by that is you expect him to be enthusiastic. Um, one second, sorry, gents, technical difficulties again. Sorry, um, what I mean by that is that he's very enthusiastic, is Cotter. And he wants to get forward. He wants to get those balls. He wants to tech on players, and all that's great. And it's all entertaining. It's fantastic. But it's about having that wisdom about you and a bit of vision, and trying to see where those players are going. Other players are going to be. Um, yeah, exactly. And that's that, that's where you'll probably say about finished product, Joel. I'm not putting words into your mouth, mate. But yeah, exactly, so. exactly that, mate. Um, but. I mean, if we've got team to change it up, yeah, I do believe we have. I think a lot of them have got come back from trade and uh, we've, got a lot, we've got a lot of players to come back from injury or suspension in case of Adam Phillips. Hmm. Um, Luke O'Connell's obviously going to make a massive difference. It's Luke O'Connell. I don't really say any more of that. 
we need to look and how that and we need to look our um please ask please tell me how to pronounce the name of that French lad we've just got. Uh I'll just call him Man, Man uh, Manuel for for time being Manny. Manuel. Yeah, I'll just call him back for time being. <laughs> yeah, here we go. We'll, what's it? it we, and somebody said a good one. It were MDG. MDG, weren't it? Oh, right. Call him MDG. Yeah, MDG. Right. Right. MDG. MDG. Right. So right. we're getting MDG um, coming in. So we're going to have to see how, he, how he's, what he's like, what he's about, um, whether we're going to see Laparta move into that kind of more left, uh, mm. sorry, right. Um, Decided, position and then he's going to play it through center to me that would make sense I don't know what you'll think but mm -hmm. yeah good call. yeah but yeah, cool. i mean there is there is the, the i think the big concern is and I, like i was one of the people that put his head up, up a bit and said and said you know the norwood trans sell it sale does make sense and the reason why i said that was because i thought well club must have a decent idea on who was going to replace him. Now, we discussed this, before, well, Holland has discussed this before we came, came on here. And I said, you know, I expected Watters, when I saw him start, is to take up a very similar t role to what Norwood has. Mm. I don't think one, he's playing the same role as Norwood, but also he just looks so far off the pace at the moment. And that is really concerning because Norwood didn't bag in 20 goals, don't get me wrong, but his mm. contribution as he, i.e. Putting, putting frights up defender, pressing, you did see a little bit of that from Cole, but I don't think that's Cole's role. I think Cole's yeah. role is to get onto Cole's role. Sounds like a baker's. <laughs> Cole's role is to get onto is to get onto those through balls when they're coming coming out because he's got that pace and he can get behind back line like we saw if you remember against Sheffield Wednesday last season. Good goal. That's what we need from him. Mm. Um, it's going to be. It needs to be like Watts' job to close them balls, uh, close them uh, to press those defenders and get them into making a mistake. And I just don't see that happening, and that's limiting the amount of threat that we've got. Um, so I, I, I think we're not playing the same as what we played last season. I cannot identify what, mm. what this team and what Collins is trying to do, um, mm. which makes it difficult for a lot of people when we're, I think when Duff were losing, we kind of looked at it and said, right, we're trying to play this system it was quite clear from start we knew how Michael Duff wanted to play. Mm. Collins at the moment, we've got this, we've we've gone from that system under Duff, which were really successful. It was boring sometimes. Let's mm. not go, you know, beat around the bush about it. But we did really well. We managed to get eight to six points. Now, what I expected from Collins straight away was them to him to adopt that system and trying to perfect it in some way. So we did so when we went one nil down, for example, which were a big thing for his last season, mm. we'd be able to come back and get that into a more attacking base. So what I'm seeing now is it's happening other way around. So we've yeah. got so we start we start game in an attacking sense and then stick to it and not go back to the old system we have. So it's a bit little bit confusing. So in answer yeah. to your question if it means playing boring football, which is effective, and you're relying on people making mistakes and pressing them in, you're pressing from you're pressing in midfield, waiting for them to make mistakes, be a bit more patient, have less possession on ball, then I'm not against it, and I think we should go back to that model. It's not going to be popular, I know that, mm -hmm. um, but it's what gets results, and we're playing mightily close from going up last season, so. You know, it's it's going to be interesting, it. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we're only three games in, uh, but again, we've seen a win, a draw, a loss. I'd rather it been a a loss, a draw, and a win on ascendancy going up, but unfortunately, it's the other way around. Um, and again, we're only three games in. There's still a lot to play for. We've got players to come back. There's still plenty of time for transfer window, for any possibility, any deals coming in, rather than going out. Because I think that'll be another telltale sign and probably do another show on that as well. Players that's gone in the summer um, and what's been brought in and what we what what we like uh, likeliness is and what we bring to club and what we're missing. So that might be a show for a bit later on, but like a comparison where we could 
you know, we could improve or we could have like maybe not really done that. We've stagnated a bit. But uh, Dan, Joel, appreciate taking time out and your thoughts about the game. Oxford back at Tom. So we will get another show out probably Thursday. Uh, what day on tomorrow? Probably Thursday or Friday, we'll get another video out for that. Um, again, Oxford. It's another game at home. And again, all being well, Phillips be on bench a bit more stronger, a bit more match fit. Uh, that uh, French kid, again, he might be getting back up to speed, match sharpness. I think there's no injury worries after uh, overnight's game. So again, touch wood going forward. Slowly, slowly, the strength and the squad depth will be getting a bit better. Uh, let us know your thoughts as well about the game. Uh, if you went, um, obviously, a disappointing game, but let us know your thoughts, man, at match and everything like that. Uh, but Dan, Joel, appreciate you taking your time, Mark. No problem. Uh, you, mate. Get, no get ready for the weekend. Together. No no problem. Uh, get ready for the weekend. Dusty sends Dan all being well. We can get back to winning ways. It's easy seven done. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Let us know your thoughts. One thing left to say, you're red.